Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Why is gold yellow? Let's explore. That was a question posed to me uh, very recently by, by a member of the community, and I wanted to kind of share um, this very simple query. It's a very good one, but it's not really talked about a whole lot, at least in this community. So I thought I'd take the time to kind of look into this um, a little bit more. You know, on, on a general sense, most of us probably can venture a guess as to why gold is yellow or why copper has that reddish hue or why silver is so reflective. But we're going to talk about it a little bit more and kind of deep uh, dive into science here a little bit. And uh, But before we can figure out exactly why gold is yellow, first we must understand the concept of light. And again, it's a very elementary thing. Most of us understand what light is. But let's kind of talk about it because that's going to give a little bit of the background as to what uh, that, how light can uh, translate into color. And uh, so we have to understand about color and light. You know, white light, which we're all familiar with, is what we usually simply call light. It's just a mixture of a lot of colors, most colors. Uh, they all have their individual wavelength. And the light bounces off any object that is reflected, scattered, and absorbed. So a wavelength might arrive at an object, but another one may leave it. And this is the mechanism that is re essentially responsible for giving things their color, to re reflectivity and absorption of light by different wavelengths. So the human eye absorbs this wavelength and transforms it into color. Uh, it should be noted that objects have their own physical color, uh, but the color our eyes see might be somewhat different. Uh, depending on the host of context, viewing angle, um, biophysical cues, uh, like disability. You know, you've heard of people being colorblind, for instance. And we see that things have a different hue and different lighting conditions. And I've tried to create here on this video a source of light that is as white as I can uh, think of, an LED a bright light to shine on these metals so that you can see their colors as true as the optics can provide um, with what equipment I do have here. Um, it wasn't until Newton, Isaac Newton, that we discovered that light really is the source of color. And uh, it has been utilized by many different artists during the time. And uh, it gives, helps improve our understanding of colors and the effect they have on us uh, from the different research that was conducted in that time period. And it happens to revolutionize physics in the process. And that is really remarkable on how we see objects um, in terms of their hue and their color. Um, but so now we understand light, you know, the fact that black essentially absorbs all colors and white reflects all colors. Um, and those two colors are really not colors at all because of their absorption and reflectivity. They are essentially seen as uh, just the properties or the absence or reflectivity of light or of, of color based, uh, based off of their reflectivity absorption rates. So now that we understand light a little bit better, let's talk about, and, and we understand light and color a little bit better, let's talk about gold. Because in order to really understand the color of gold being yellow, we need to have an understanding of the chemistry of gold. And as such, we also compare it to copper and silver. <clears throat> if you look at gold on the periodic table, um, it has an atomic number of 79. And uh, it's really at the end of the uh, transitional metals. Uh, but if you look at it closer, you'll notice some things. It's right below copper and silver, which are two very important metals in human history. 
and most of us understand why in this community for sure. And uh, they, they share some very important characteristics. Comparing copper metal, silver, and gold with the numerous neighboring metal items, atoms, it has never been a problem as pure metals have been around for millennia. And, uh, and that is the amazing thing about them. They're very recognizable in nature. Um, in, in their raw form, if they literally are in that raw form, most gold nowadays is found in ore. The same thing with copper and especially silver is found in ore. But if you find them in the wild, they are uh, certainly noticeable. Um, although silver is probably the least amount as such because there are times when you can find it uh, mixed with lead and other elements that dulls its color. Um, and uh, But... Unlike silver, copper, and pretty much all other metals for that matter, gold doesn't sport a bland silvery color. Um, gold is yellow, so that doesn't explain much. And by the way, when we talk about copper being somewhat bland, you know, copper does have a tendency after time to tarnish. Um, and so does silver, by the way, depending on what's around it. So it can be dulled. Gold does not react in that regard. Um, it's yellow, so that doesn't explain much, but perhaps even more interestingly, uh, it is below mercury. And mercury is important here. I don't have an example of mercury here, which is the only liquid metal at room temperature. Gallium is a metal that liquefies at 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but gold's yellow color and mercury's liquidness, uh, they have a lot in common, uh, believe it or not. And what does that have to do um, with that commonality? Uh, well, it's basically, we go back to Albert Einstein for the answer to that, interestingly enough. And, uh, and really, to understand that, you have to have a little bit of a basic understanding of quantum mechanics, uh, amazingly enough, and uh, relativistic mechanics, especially for the heavier elements of the periodic table. And we all know how heavy gold is, a very dense metal, uh, platinum is the is the next densest on the periodic table. It is, but it obviously has that silvery color as well. But it's a more dullish, kind of bluish silvery color. Um, and chemistry quickly incorporated in these theories into what is called relativistic quantum chemistry, and it is uh, really related to relativistic movement. Uh, basically, when things start to move at speeds comparable to that of light, we don't only look at their mass, we look at their relativistic mass. Basically, when things start to move so fast, additional energy cannot substantially increase their speeds, and instead they start to increase their mass. Technically speaking, everything has a relativistic mass, but because day-to-day -day objects move so incomparably slower than the speed of light, this mass is absolutely negligible. Not the same thing can be said for atoms. Well, at least to some atoms. Um, and uh, according to a calculation, uh, there is a uh, calculation that basically says that the electron inside an atom will move at a speed approximately equal to the atomic number divided by 137 in this calculation. For gold, we already know that the atomic number is 79. So electrons would be moving at 58% of the speed of light, which is quite substantial in that relativism. Uh, it means that the effects of the relativistic um, mechanics are clearly noticeable for gold, and these effects are affecting its color. So to understand the color, you have some basic idea of the chemistry of gold. But we know that relativistic effects are in play. And, uh, and the electrons of gold, especially in the outermost electron shell, move at a relativistic speed. This outer shell is responsible for chemical behavior and a lot of the physical properties, including the color. So the human eye spectrum varies from wavelengths of about 390, which is blue, to 700 nanometers which is red. 
And uh, if you look at the reflections, um, you'll see the gold absorbs a lot of those low wavelengths, essentially the blue wavelengths. So blue is very important in giving us the color of yellow for um, uh, gold. Uh, so it absorbs the blue wavelength and reflects the opposite. The human eye sees electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength of near 600 nanometers as yellow. Uh, that's what gold reflects, and that's why we're seeing yellow. And it also occurs in silver, but the relativistic effects are lower, notably in cesium and pure form. It also has sort of a golden streak for the same reason. And uh, so that is why. And, uh, and, and that is why mercury also has a, s a similar relativistic effects that are responsible for that uh, as well. But it's just amazing how fast that light travels. So essentially it is based off of Einstein's theory of relativity and this, and this new uh, relativistic um, 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 theory that we have here. Relativistic mass essentially. And gold is very, very much has that density. So its density plays a part in its color. And that is why that gold is yellow. Fascinating indeed. And let's take a look at gold by itself uh, in this regard, taking the other metals out. And again, I'm trying to uh, give you a look of this, of this particular bar um, uh, in the whitest light that I can think of to provide to give you this to give you this look at gold in this way and by the way I'm showing the back side of a cast bar Credit Suisse 100 gram cast bar so you understand that this is actual gold pure gold here as pure as um, as one of the most pure that you can find um, uh, available today in the marketplace, four nines fine, but there it is, gold, and uh, it is quite beautiful. And I think the the properties of its relativistic mass um, is is quite um, fascinating because not only does it hold its color, it does not um, tarnish, it does not react like silver does or like copper does. And so it, it just uh, gives you that um, all new appreciation for gold, for what it is. Silver is the most reflective metal out there. And copper, believe me, those metals are beautiful in their own right. But uh, nonetheless, they do um, tarnish over a short period of time and depending on the environment and atmosphere around them. There you can see these metals together here to see the difference between those metals and their pure color. It's really intriguing, but uh, a really good question. I forgot who uh, made me aware of it or asked the question, but I think that's something worthy of discussion here um, and uh, to know that gold is quite an intriguing metal for various different reasons because of its physical properties and chemical properties um, that makes it unique amongst all the other precious metals and metals out there in general it's a gold let's take a look at the metal even closer so that you can really see and fill the screen with that pure gold color there. Fascinating indeed. Gold. In the raw form. Pure. So there you have it. So post your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on gold and its color? It's quite brilliant. Fascinating indeed to see and to know about. And um, I think that the amazingness of gold in its color, I think in some ways uh, we can discover and find out why silver is so special in its own way as well. Not just because of the color, but because of other properties of silver that, uh, that make it um, very, very um, 
uh, unique. But gold is certainly unique in its own right for different reasons. And I think that's why it is treasured so much by uh, different empires and epochs and generations and nations throughout history and times. There you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Post your thoughts in the comment section below. We'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.